Let's check out what EG and OG are doing. Bands coming out. We've seen day one meta starting out. Lacoste, what's kind of stood out for you with day one picks bands? Anything crazy happening? Shadow Demon for sure. He's uh, been picked uh, in what, 17 matches, 70% uh, win rate. Elder Titan, 62% win rate. G Gyro, I'm surprised about this hero. Yeah? Because he's not being paired up with Io. He's being played uh, solo. I, I had to talk to some of the players, uh, and uh, it feels like the hero comes online so quickly. That's why he's being played. And uh, I don't know how you feel about Io, but the, the hero doesn't feel that strong anymore. I, we had I have not been impressed. Yeah. Yesterday, that Io is feels like he's balanced right now. That means that he's bad. <laughs> Yeah. What is this? I was meant to be the OP hero in Dota. He's been OP as long as I can remember. But right now, yeah, he doesn't seem OP. Um, and you compare him to the other fours, he just doesn't make plays. He's very much an enabling support who just tethers to someone, makes them this super-powered carry. But you look at what other teams are picking and playing in these four and five roles, and they're heroes that do so much. Speaking of heroes that do a lot, Chen talked about as maybe one of those heroes that's going to be just banned all the time here at TI. Has kind of snuck through and being ignored by some teams whereas others have banned him out og absolutely loved and no tell one of those very you know pl well known plays for his micro skills and he's going to be picking up the chen here in game one at least in the games that we casted yesterday chen was really not contested Five seconds. and enchantress is gone yeah i think the first series maybe chen was banned out but we didn't see a single chen pick in our games uh, and some of the series yeah it was just completely ignored so We'll have to kind of see. Chan. Do you know how you counter Chen? You get Ogre, you buy Hand of Midas, you just multicast, kill his whole army. Army's dead. Yeah. Okay. Got it. I'm on board with that. A lot of Ogre yesterday. Um, in the three positions as well as the five, we saw some of these offlane duos where Ogre was bloodlusting, like a Shadow Shaman, a Dark Willow, and just these beefy, scary lanes where this right-clicking support um, can just utilize this bloodlust. Tide gets picked up by EG. I was looking at some of the day one records. Tide, seven wins, one loss. This big tanky fella has been on a tear in day one group stage uh, and has looked really good. Yeah, for sure. Uh, OD still in the pool, one of the better heroes against the Tide Hunter. Also, they banned the Slark themselves, which is one of the also better heroes against them. Maybe they're thinking about OD. OD is usually banned. I don't see too much of the hero, at least from day, day number one. And this is also a really hot pickup. Because it doesn't uh, reveal anything. Uh, it can be played as position four, can be played as mid, so everything's still open. Yeah, that's always a big thing in TI with, I feel like, drafts in general. You want to be first to picking at least one of your heroes that can maybe be flexible with roles, or at least lanes. OG do the same thing. Alchemist, we've seen in the mid lane, we've seen in the safe lane. So when they get to that eighth, ninth pick of the draft, they can be deciding, okay, do we want to pick a different mid, or do we want to pick a different safe laner? Your draft is just so much more open as far as what you can play. It feels like OG wants to play this fast. Chen, Alchemist, gets the yeah. good timing on the Radiance, and uh, Chen can make a lot of uh, movement early on. Alk is definitely this hero, as much as it's a like, quote-unquote carry, you don't want to go super late game with Alchemist. It's very much a timing hero that comes online with a couple of items, and you get those items faster than anyone else in the game. That's the nature of Grievous Greed, and, well, fast is the name of the game for OG. They don't want to go late game against EG, a team... To me, EG always... They like going late game. Arteez is kind of known for playing these more late game scaling heroes. EG don't usually dominate and win games in 20, 25 minutes. They're more this 30, 40, 45 minute kind of team. So I'm thinking about the heroes that uh, EG needs. They ha we saw how efficient in one of our games yesterday where Alchemist is being uh, pressured after the first five, six minutes where he goes to jungle. So you just you don't necessarily need to kill him just follow him in the jungle, try to block some of his camps, uh, have a good hero that can rotate early on. We saw it was uh, Vici Gaming do that with the Storm Spirit mid, which is one of those Sumail classics, of course, if they want to consider that. Um, EG do have that final pick of the draft, so they're not going to be rushing into picking maybe their mid or carry, but uh, definitely an option that looked really good against the Alchemist with the, the play style of Vici Gaming Seconds. when they beat Fnatic. But... For now, bands coming out on the AA as well as Treant Protector. Treant, kind of maybe the unusual one, but 
It is, of course, uh, one of those Seb special heroes. Yeah, and it makes a lot of sense here. Chen, Alchemist, uh, if, if you just combine these healing heroes with the uh, Chen's aura, the extra 20% heal, it's insane. Yeah. Alchemist, <laughs> during the ulti, if you don't blow him up, uh, he's not going to die. And that's why OG, the second they pick up Alchemist, ban AA. They're like, exactly. you want to deal without healing? AA is the one hero in the game that negates healing entirely. Uh, and they're going to make sure they delete that hero. And for EG, I think if you can't stop the healing from happening, you need burst damage. Lina brings some to the table, but I feel like that's going to be something they have to prioritize when playing against an Alchemist with you know Chemical Rage, heavy healing over time. You have to be able to burst him and blow him up, whether that's coming from magic nukes, heavy physical burst. Um, you need some response to that. Oh, you will need some kind of a guaranteed stun when you open up with position 5, who doesn't have any kind of control. You need to be careful about Ember Spirits, Storm Spirits as well. Yep. L right now, I don't think they need to ban out uh, OD, even though I find OD one of the better heroes against the Tidehunter. Alchemist OD seems a bit greedy. Yeah, I would be a little surprised to see something along those lines myself. Let's see what they go for instead. As for EG, still looking likely for their five position for fly. Crystal Maiden, one of those fives that you often see against the Chen. The Frostbite is always good against those creeps as well. Something that fly enjoys playing. But OG definitely themselves need some kind of catch and lockdown. I think you mentioned heroes like the Amber Spirit coming to mind. Centro banned out. That's one of those heroes alongside Tide that's had a lot of success here. That's how you counter it. Get the Midas. Uh, this is looking like a uh, position 5 Ogre. Okay. For sure. Yeah, yeah, they've got the Tide already. Probably no Midas, but... Um, you never know. <laughs> this hero can get a lot of gold. He's got the GPM talent as well. Although one player got cast range over. I was really Because surprised. he was playing core. Was it the... Uh, their core. I mean, you get gold, you want more gold. <laughs> I think. I mean, I, I guess for me, I'm, I'm just like I see gold GPM talent. I get GPM talent. You know, that's my my mind works well, in a very simple way. You had a different way. opinion yesterday when Crystal Maiden and Storm were paired oh, up that's together. True. Oh yeah, yeah, that's the old CM. Uh, that's the one exception maybe. But that even the CM went for the GPM talent. And this is the hero that I like against Alchemist. You have Ogre who can easily rotate, has a stun. He does not. He's one of the strongest uh, level 1 heroes who can trade. And you have yeah. also Alina, Tidehunter. These heroes can easily rotate and just hunt down Alchemist. Uh, I, I love to call it between 7 and 11 minute mark when he's most vulnerable. Uh, yeah, the pre lane, the pre radiant stage, but post kind of laning stage. Yeah. It's, it, I mean, so when Al goes in the jungle, because he farms faster in the jungle than in lane by the nature of Grievel's Greed. Stacking up gold so you kill all those tiny little neutral camps that give you way more than any other hero farm. And you want to outnumber alchemist teams at the 5 and 10 minute mark when the bounty runes are spawning. Yep. We'll see what OG look to snag up here. Still likely looking for I mean, a Jerex or a Seb hero. Something to give them some lockdown and control. Grimstroke comes out. Double unstable concoction. Let me see. You look at what their ulti combos are with the Soulbind and then... EG themselves get a Gyrocopter. You talk about coming online fast and Gyrocopter, that being one of his biggest strengths and why we've seen so much Gyrocopter play. That's a hero that comes online and maybe can contest and pressure the Alchemist. Yeah, it's all about the fighting right now. You want to be aggressive, and the, this is where Gyro excels. Like He has Rocket Barrage. Once he hits level 6, he can easily rotate, grab a kill, buys all these small items, a couple of raid bands, maybe even get a drum if needed, if you want to just continue to snowball. So... Right now, OG's lineup is really vulnerable to like any kind of... Uh, these two heroes don't have any kind of escape mechanism, Chen and Grimstroke, and uh, not enough control. Yeah. What are the offlines you might want to play against something like Gyrocopter? Because that's what... I mean, OG needs something for Seb, like some kind of Grimstroke plus one hero that can just not feed against Gyrocopter. Okay, what nothing. about to do? No, 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 no I'm just thinking. <laughs> I, I realized, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, all right, Lacoste, come on. You're, he's going to come up with something smart. I mean, to you say. can uh, no, yeah. always pair it up with Doom. They're using all their I mean, reserve they, time. OG don't know. Yeah, yeah they're using reserve time. They're going to get their other core first. So they have, they don't have last pick. So this is where often you'll see teams pick up. You know, you're going to last pick something that's not a mid or a carry just because you're picking back to back. 
Ember Spirit for now. We talked about getting Catch, um, and Ember Spirit brings that to the table. So Ember Alchemist is going to be there, one and two position. That's actually their only catch. Yep. Oh yeah, you've got if out goes Blink Dagger, you kind of have that unstable concoction Blink initiation, and we're seeing more of this right click out build where he goes into Abyssal Blade, so Blink Abyssal as well uh, in the mid to late game. But it's yeah, it's one of their main sources of picking people off. They still don't have a hero that deals well with the Tide Hunters Kraken Shell. I don't think any of these are yeah. gonna build Silver Edge. It just doesn't seem like yeah, so you, they you can't worried about uh, it. It's always gonna be a guaranteed ulti from Tide Hunter. Correct. Yeah, and I guess what we're, what's more common nowadays is you just play around the cooldown or play use your BKBs against the the Ravage, because there's only what really this is the only big cooldown that they have the Tide Hunter ulti. Yeah, yeah. they can fight all the time. Well, same goes for OG's lineup. They really don't care about the cooldowns. We'll see what some of these last picks are. OG with one more ban. No reserve time left. This draft is definitely been a bit of a rushed affair for them. They ban out the Templar Assassin. What about Sumail playing that? I would really like to see a Sumail Storm here. I feel like there is just... I mean, there's Ember with Searing Chains. There's the Grimstroke with his Silence. But it feels like a really good Storm game for EG. For sure. They have nothing to deal with Storm Spirit. Chains... Uh, Phantom, I, I don't think that's enough. That's for OG. 10 seconds to decide what their offlane hero for Seb is going to be. Time's ticking by, and they need something that is going to be out of fear against likely the Gyrocopter in lane, unless we see some kind of lane swap. It's going to be a Sand King. So, these Invis heroes becoming more and more prominent, I feel, at this TI so far, just because of the limited number of Sentry Wards. It puts this economic drain on your oppos opposing team's supports. And Sandstorm in lane gives you at least some defensive capabilities to play against a Gyrocopter. Ten seconds remaining. They needed a low cooldown stun, that's Five why they decided to go remaining. with a Sanking. It's also really good with the Grim Stroke. And they go for OD. Alright. OD. I mean, that's a hero that can wail away on the Alchemist a bit. As far as out counters go, I think some of the heroes we've seen become popular. Slark's the big one. Slark was actually banned out in the first stage here, and OD's at least traditionally been one of those others. The tricky bit is the Alk's BKB timing, because he's definitely going to be going BKB second, third item against Tide already, um, so he's going to be getting that similarly against the OD. So BKB becomes very important for this OG yeah, side. One problem, actually two problems that uh, OD faces is Alchemist is going to get the good timing on uh, BKB, which he struggles against, and also the missed chance from the Radiance. Yeah, you don't... He, you don't build MKB on this. There might hero. be, like, a Bloodthorn as, like, a fourth or fifth item, but that, that doesn't... That's not an item you build either on OD, really, so... Uh, some of that missed chance is a problem. You go BKB against the Radiance itself, but... We'll see if uh, Alk even goes for more evasion on top of the Radiance. So it will be mostly the heroes and player assignments you'd expect. S4 are going to be picking up the Tide, Crit playing the four position Lina, Fly on the Ogre, RTZ Gyro, Sumail OD. And on the OG side, No Tail going to be playing one of his signature heroes, the Chen. Anna, Alchemist. This goes way back. You know, think of when Anna was first picked up by OG. They were the Alchemist team who just first to pick this hero all day long. And that was with Absolutely Anna, perfect. of course, playing that hero. Jerex on the Grimstroke, Topson playing Ember, and Seb playing that offlane Sand King. With OD, they have a save, which they kind of needed. Uh, a lot of single target spells on OG. So, mm -hmm. Sumail is, is going to be the damage dealer, but he's also going to be uh, a saving hero with the Astral. He's not going to yeah want to be on the front lines. That's where our TZS4 are going to try bait out some spells. And you look for that Astral as a save. Because, yeah, they, you know, often you see Fly playing those, some of those save heroes. And that's something that wasn't available. At least the Shadow Demon was banned out. <laughs> ourselves into our opening game OG versus EG game number one okay as for 9017 his last match is tied not too shabby he's warmed up he's ready to go yeah, I don't want to spoil it but that was probably a pub match <sighs> look why are you gonna do that to us Lacoste oh yeah do that sound the screenshot got the screenshot <laughs> Sending that one to mom and dad at home. They're watching. 
You know, I just want to make sure they know. OG versus EG. They're, 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 they're invested now. They heard all the drama. They want to see what happens, what goes down here between these players. And, you know, it's the closest thing to, you know, a Dota version of our own little soap opera. Perfect. I feel like the best item so far of the international is Ring of Bassy. <laughs> you buy Sage <laughs> Mask and yeah. then buy Ring of Protection in the side shop. I, OG hasn't got a, a Sage's Mask this hero. Transcends expectation. I mean, they don't, you don't really go Bassy on Sanking or Grimstroke. Assuming Grimstroke's even going to be playing in that offlane. Is this a game where OG's maybe going to try and secure their Alks farm a bit more with a tri lane, or are we going to just be seeing the typical 2 1 2 setup? I think it's going to be 2 1 2. Okay. So they're going to help Seb out, give him a better lane. Let's they can start with the three heroes at top Everybody. and then just switch back to Seb's lane. <laughs> yeah. Interesting, Anna and Wait, Seb are both, crazy. at least for now, memory. down bottom. Obviously, we're 45 Wait, seconds baby, away baby, from baby, creep spawning. Baby, baby. But they are looking to scout out these lanes to make sure they have Alchemist the win, in the right baby. place. <laughs> and of course, it's not an OG <laughs> game without a healthy amount of Can't chat will. Your sins. One of the... I, I love that they, they've added these over the, the years. Like when they first got added, it was one of those things that it was like, oh, you know, is this really is this, this serious professional Dota? No, this is great. It adds so much. You don't so have a chat wheel sound, right? Me? Yeah. No, I don't. You're right. All right, Lacoste. Uh, you don't know. We, we, that's, our, that's our job for today. Get in, get on the chat wheel for TI10. <laughs> Gotta come up with something clever to say. Something's wrong. Something's wrong. Okay. All right, well. We'll uh, have a bit of a pause, start of the day, as we check Seb! ourselves into the game. How big's your Seb? It's the shortest one. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, kids these know. days are arguing who has a bigger Seb. Mm -hmm. Back in my days, we had a different uh, measurements. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, it's not not your si the size of the Seb. There's uh. We'll see just how big Seb can play this game. He's playing the Sand King. And he is going to be put under a lot of pressure if he is up against this EG tri lane down here. Absolutely of course, perfect. his iconic axe moment where that line came from. That's actually such a crazy story with, with <laughs> Seb. To think some guy who didn't play Pro <laughs> Dota for a few years, he came back, he coached, and he suddenly gets picked up and wins. Well, not picked up, but suddenly he's like, okay, I'm playing. We didn't... You know, they didn't have somebody last minute to play TI, and Seb's like, all right. All right, I'm, I'm going to hop it. in, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> then you win a TI. Yeah. Uh, the way Notel talked about it in the documentary was like, you know, I mean, for Seb, it was never like he wanted to put himself on the team. It was just like, they, Notel really felt strongly like, dude, there's no reason you can't be on this team. You know how we play. Like, he, he had full faith in Seb <laughs> as, a, as a player, not just as a coach. Absolutely that's always been Absolutely such a big part of OG. Yeah, we had a couple of these uh, Cinderella stories uh, in our Dota history with Wings as well. Yeah. Wings at least went in at TI not as like super underdogs, but it was more an underdog story. This, when they, they, they're a team that came from nowhere. Like nobody really knew those five players. They didn't have a long history of success in Dota. Um, and the fact they came up throughout the year winning, it was like an ESL Manila tournament and then Absolutely one TI perfect. playing some of the craziest Dota and picks. I mean, people still talk about Wings and the way they drafted and played to this day. I think three Wings members are here <laughs> doing on the, on the analyst panel. desk. Okay. Yeah. They have Burning, ZSMJ, and the English panel, we have me, Kyle, BSJ. <laughs> you I was wondering, like, which, you which players are you going to fire shots at, you know? You, go, you, you went nice on Fogged there, you know? Uh, Fogged has uh, my respect. Me yeah. and Fogged go Absolutely back fun. in the days yeah, yeah. when we played against each other. We, we almost ended up on um, the same team for TI2. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we did, we're, the thing is, the Western the Western players who are like, you know, the superstars, they're all still playing. A lot of the Chinese players who are like, you know, the most famous, most successful players, they won TI and stuff, they they retired. It's like, dang. Come on, guys, keep winning. Go for more TIs. They seem like content to like, oh, won a TI. Pack it up now. What if there's a rule that you can't win two TIs? Like, you win a TI, you have to retire. <laughs> that sounds terrible, what <laughs> <laughs> I want to see people making a legacy for themselves. Thompson Ember. 
He's scouting out some of these lanes and rotations. Kind of, no, he's the mid. That's a mid ember, just seeing what heroes are going where. Gives a high five. There we go. Arteezy pays him back the high five. That's what we like to see. Drops his little... Oh, and they're swapping the lanes already. This yeah. is the power of Chen, even though the, the cooldown is pretty big on level one. He TP'd Sanking to the top lane. Now he's going to TP bottom. Yep. One of the strengths of the Chen. Yeah, they can then get the lanes. They want this Sanking against Jaro. Jaro's a TP, though. Jaro's going to TP bottom, but the problem is Sepp now TP yeah, bottom, too. Yeah, just TP bottom now. Yep. Oh, that is Chen in a nutshell. Will Seb just TP right away? Doesn't look Get like that. He wants to take a couple of CS. Yeah. Anna does not really want to lane against this gyrocopter. That's a hero that can put a lot more pressure on him. So it seems like, okay, maybe not for now. They're not going to at least instantly TP. We'll have to wait and see how soon they might do that. How do you how do you see this mid lane going, Ember and OD? Once OD hits level four, it's going to become really tough for Ember Spirit to lane when he has one to one build on OD. Yep. He's just going to keep hitting him with Hurricane Orb. See early nulls coming out. He's just bringing out whatever stat items he can get, making life as difficult as possible. Now let's say coming out of top Seb. Like that Sanking, the first point in the bar strike already is going to have that matchup against the Tide Hunter. It kind of seemed like this was maybe the matchup they didn't want when uh, the Chen used that Holy Persuasion to swap the lane, but they are sticking with their their guns here, giving Chen the safe lane to secure the Alchemist some farm, and No Tail will come on in to make sure he gets this small camp. He really wants to get a, a good creep here. Yeah, he'll get the D Ward, but Fly coming in just in time. He doesn't get there in time to block the camp, but it's unfortunately for No Tail, it's not the creep he was hoping for. Oh, it's a small wild wing. <laughs> That's probably the worst creep you can get. Yeah, well, the other camp that was the kobolds. He's hoping for, like, the harpy or something there. Or, or the little ghost with the slow. Oh, top lane. Don't miss it. Don't worry. Wouldn't wouldn't dream of it. Mother Barris right coming in a second. First blood. No, he hasn't got the damage. It's S4 and Crit who get the kill. They will get the revenge one on Jerex, but... Crit Seth? with another stun. That, that, that's a dead Grimstroke. One or two more right clicks. He's got the early point in the fiery souls for the attack speed, and he finds the double kill on Crit's Lena. Thousand gold on Lena. She's also level three. What? Just casual thousand gold. That's where you queue up the Midas. Come on, Crit. No. Well. Very good start to that top lane. Oh, the play. He used the Inkswell before, and then he TP'd them with the Chen. Hit cute little play, but uh, not very effective. <laughs> it was very cute. The two points in the Inkswell as well. Arteezy, though, has a salve now. He had that Bloodlust movement speed, which helped him get away as well. As right afterwards, Jerex will TP back to the top lane. If they'd found a kill there, that would have looked really nice for them. Seb has some backup now, looking to get the double stun off, but has to use it defensively as he kind of backs off right afterwards. I think recognizing that he can't really follow this one up with any further aggression. How's our mid lane looking? OD and Ember, pretty even on CS here. A couple of CS advantage for Sumail, but nothing really separating the two. Got to imagine Topson's had to chew through a bit more regen. Bottle as yeah. well as salves. Also, they need to control the runes because Topson has a bottle, so OD, you're just going to put him under the astral. Yep. And then go for the rune. Topson doesn't have Searing Chains. He may go for the Slide of Fist Steel. Ooh, couldn't get it. You can pick up the yep. runes during that slide of fist if you're on top of it. If you're good. <laughs> it looked like Sumail actually stopped moving, so he wasn't on top of the rune. Um, so he couldn't maybe pick it up with that slide of fist. I think Sumail, it seemed like he saw it coming. But nice attempted rune steal by uh, the Ember. Topson is kind of going to be forced out of this lane a little bit. The level 5 OD, three points in the Astral. Very hard to lane against now. I think Ember just feeling like he's going to have a better time in the jungle with these two points in the Flame Guard. He was relying to get the rune, yep. refill the bottle. Now he needs to be a bit cautious or just farm under the tower. He's level five, three points in slight. Got to keep an eye for these bounty runes. Five minutes in, Alchemist in the game. Both teams typically going to be eyeing off bounty runes here. 
There's no tail. Can he get either of these? I imagine he's going to struggle. He may go for the deny here. Will he get it in time? Ogre is there, so he can't deny it. And three bounty routes for EG. That's, like That's how you play against Alchemist. Try to steal as many bounties as possible. Top lane. Okay, they're going in. They hit the Ink Swell. S4. And a bit of trouble here. Does look to turn. And they throw the Anchor Smash for Seb. Forces him back. Ten stick charges on Seb. He is kind of trying to bait in some aggression here. Early days, it is EG with an edge in the laning stage. Definitely kill that homing missile. Denied Denies by Denies the homing missile. Nice. Nope, it's top lane. They bring down crit. <laughs> Jerex and Seb teaming up for that one. These early points in the ink swell, comboing with the sanking and the Barrow Strike initiation, looking pretty scary. Very potent stuff. And no tell, what a teammate. He TPs just to get this stack off, I believe. That is true five position support play. Haste rune, can Thompson get this? No, he doesn't. Another rune stolen by EG. They're doing such a good job controlling these runes. Denying them time and time again from Thompson's Ember Spirit, who would have loved to have gotten some of these to refill his bottle. Makes his life so much more difficult. And I love the build and smell this game. He goes for three Null Talisman boots uh, so he can take a fight. Like, this hero can be really aggressive early on with this kind of a build. Yeah. And with that haste rune, Flyd ran in. He gets a ward down deep in the enemy jungle, and the, by the top shrine, he just scouts, but over in the other side of the jungle, oh, and he's also scouting. He's not blocking either camp. They just want to get vision of the alchemist so they can go for some kills, perhaps. And I guess if you do block those camps, you risk feeding away gold because it becomes very easy to deward those observer wards. <laughs> Here we go. How how's this? How do you feel like this early game has fared? Is either team kind of pulled ahead, or is it just? It's pretty even. Alchemist is now just uh, farming the jungle. This is the time where EG needs to buy some smokes and uh, try to take some stacks from him. Lena is uh, level four, two points in Dragon Slave. She can easily steal some of the creeps. Also, Gyro just hit level six. If they want to make a move, he can easily rotate as well. Yeah, instantly fly and. Arteezy were running at this Chen, but it doesn't seem like they'll be able to do a whole lot. But you need to buy a smoke and the place some Oh, no tails vision. tipping fly. Oh, no. Careful. I think he saw that gang coming and he says, I see you, buddy. Although I don't think he was using that word oh, to describe Jarek it. Oh, Jarek is going to kill that Observer Ward straight away. Yeah, they know that OG is playing so well. They understand the, how to play with Alchemist. That this goes far back. They already placed an Observer Ward. The only way to approach is pretty much with the uh, with the smoke. Yep. Playing Sanking, say level six. Not going for the epicenter. So similar to the Tide, but Tide is holding a skill point. So if he wants to skill that Ravage, he can. And just rotate in. Going for that early slide of fist. Doesn't have any points in the Searing Chains, but level 4 slide of fist does a lot of damage. Jerek's in some trouble as he gets stunned up. The cooldown follow-up is there, and this should be a kill, but if OG can cut it just to one loss, that doesn't matter. They can just show yeah. on the lanes, try to make uh, something happen with uh, only Jerek's being the casualty. I think they're fine with that because the Alchemist is farming. Absolutely. We've got two other lanes being farmed. Seb's just going to use a Barrow Strike to make sure he gets the last hit on the creeps. And s all getting kind of low here, but has got a casual cloak. Should be just fine. Until perhaps Grimstroke shows up. Three points in Inkswell. You may crack an office stun from the Barrow Strike, but if the Inkswell hits you after that, you could be in trouble. And he's leveled up the Epicenter, so I believe they are looking for a kill up here. Will they go for this Barrow Strike? He's still saving a point. For Ravage, there it is, Phantom. I didn't get. Oh, oh they didn't get. Keep the silence on. Now they will still get the kill. All right. Yeah. He used the roll on the creep. Yep. That damage from the coming out from the duo, more than enough to get the kill here. Now they're rotating in mid. Thompson has to be a little bit careful here. It does have that four points in slider fist with the fire remnants to get out of there. It's going to be another cooldown from Artiz. He's looking for no tail. Definitely looking like a dead Chen here. Doesn't have level 6. No Hand of God, but the Sand King shows up from the side. Has got the Epicenter fall, but Burrow Strike. He defensively Astral to keep himself alive. Fly going to take all of that damage here as Seb comes back. Looking for the OD. He's going to die, but he in the process gets the kill for Jerex. Great bit of play coming out from OG, who turn around a bit of over-aggression here. No Searing Chains. Level 7 still on the Ember. Can't stop the TB out, but... They needed a Tidehunter. 
in that fight now. In the tide. S4 TP is, bottom. Yeah. yeah, even if you TP mid though, you're playing behind the enemy T1 tower, so it's very hard to get there on the map. Oh, they're gonna get the maybe four. Ah, almost. If Ogre got the stun, they could have gotten the four wounds, but uh, I think they're gonna be fine with uh, just three of those. Yeah. Three is like what you're hoping for if you look do really well. You're getting four. We'll see another replay of this fight here. Again, Arteezy very gung-ho about just dropping this cooldown the second the hero gets stunned up. It gets these early kills, but you can see Sumail here. He's coming in from behind, and Tide is still dead. So this fight's broken. If you're Tide hunting, you're respawning. You feel like you can't get to this fight because it's not near one of your towers. Your team playing behind the enemy lines makes it so hard to get into. Yeah, they just got the outnumber there. Now Chen is almost level 6, so is he bringing... Uh, he already used it, though. Alchemist, as far as Radiance time is going, not looking for that 11-12 minute Radiance. He did go for a double Bracer and Phase Boots, all the small items. And has they have a good vision on the Alchemist, uh, two deep uh, Observer Boards placed where near the camps where Alchemist uh, loves to hang. Yep. Vision's one thing though, they haven't used that to actually try and gank him just yet. They're just giving him the mean look. Yeah. Rotation coming in, a CS4, Thompson. He's hit level 8 now, still not going for the Searing Chains, wants to prioritize the more defensive build. So he's going to remnant on forward, has got the Ink Swallow on now, this is not looking good for Fly. The cooldown being used as well, Thompson, Slider Fist is there with a the Boris Strike follow-up, they make it S4 as well, he's been silenced up now as well, has got the Ravage, if he can get rid of the silence, he's not going to get a chance to go for it though. Not sure it would have mattered too much as well, as Arteezy wasn't really in fighting shape there, used up all of his mana with the cooldown and OG. OG, they're just bringing Whew. the numbers every single time they have an extra hero, sometimes even two, and meanwhile, Alchemist is just farming. Yep. Tops in. Trying to fire Remnant away from this one. Is looking to go for Arteezy. Sorry. For the extra messages? <laughs> We've got some, a, thir a third comment. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I, I turned off my Steam, but apparently messages still show up. I don't know what's going on here. Uh, apologies for that one, guys. Anuxi, shout out to her. Big Dota 2 item creator. Um, but uh, as it stands, OG, 2k gold lead. This is what you want, though. This is the Alchemist stuff. Um, you typically, if you don't have a gold lead with Alchemist around, you know, 15 minutes or so in the game, um, you know, you've you've struggled in the early game, but they're winning these fights while the Alchemist continues to farm for that Radiance. Yeah, we still didn't see the Ravage. S4 is not having a good time. 0, 3, and 1 at this point. OD, can he blink out? Ah, Sandstorm is gonna cancel it. Nicely done. They're just finding kills wherever they go, and when you can play this well as a four-man unit while you've got this hard carry farming, that's like OG in their comfort zone. They love these games where Anna can just, you know, hit creeps, come online in the mid game and just cause all kinds of problems. Yeah, and I love what Thompson was doing. He was just showing on the lanes. He doesn't necessarily need to get a kill and make something happen. He's just buying time for Alchemist because his laning stage was really not the greatest. And uh, he's making a comeback. Four points in Grievous Greed. That's going to be a Radiance. Uh, one more creep camp and that's it. Yep. Alki Radiance. 13.45. Not quite maybe the normal fast Alchemist timing you're hoping for, but still very good. And considering how the rest of the game is going with some of these heroes that have been shut down. Absolutely this is perfect. the positioning from Jarex. Jarex is the... His second name is Smokebreaker. <laughs> managed to prevent another EG rotation. It just feels like OG have this sixth sense right now for all these rotations coming in. A lot of the wards uh, from OG from the early start, they're reading the map so well. Now they have that uh, Radiance, it's go time. Sanking has a Blink Dagger and they instantly smoke. But at the same time, EG, talk about OG reading EG's movements, it goes both ways. They dire scan, they see this movement coming Will they try and bait and take this fight? They need the Tide. The Ravage is coming. It's not quite here in time, perhaps. Arteezy's going to be careful. He's going to go down. He does not have a BKB yet. 
Ty's rotated in from the side, but they're gonna throw out the Ravage, hit several, they kill off No-Tail, he instantly buys back to come back into this fight. No-Tail will be TPing back in as Topson in the front lines with that Flame Guard, he's just so damn tanky, and the Slide of Fist Spam does so much damage at this stage of the game. They're gonna look for a fourth kill here, they want S4, and there's just nothing EG can do to win this one. Another Borrow Strike from Seb, and they're gonna finish off S4 as and well. Sumail bails them. He just TP stopped to pick up uh, at least the bounty runes because this fight didn't this? go well. He's in Already trouble, used though. the Blink Dagger and Astral. He's dead. Yeah. He may have gotten a bounty rune. I mean, he's getting some tips. OG, 4k gold lead. They just completely team wiped EG. They killed every single hero in the game. Bottom lane. They will lose Jerex. He gets caught left behind, but ultimately that is a support. Mr. Smokebreaker himself. Sometimes you die for those smoke breaks. Yeah, really well played by OG. They use uh, the ink spell on a sank ink. He blinks in, finds the gyrocopter before he could get uh, any spells off. And this is where the damage comes from. OD was also not in that fight. He didn't use a single spell. Once Alchemist gets a BKB, that, that's going to be so tough to play. And the, the Chen immediately buys back. Buybacks after he dies, uses Hand of God, and even gets a double kill with uh, with his creeps. Yeah, no tell. I mean, this is why I think a lot of people expect Chen to be one of the most banned heroes of this tournament. It just provides so much, and it's such a nuisance from this five position role. And when you combine it with other healing sources, like the Alchemist Chemical Rage, it just buffs the, up these heals so much. Lina is level 10 with the uh, with the cast range talent. Uh, also has an urn. I was thinking about Spirit Vessel, but the, I mean it's not going to be that effective against Alchemist because he's going to have a, two ways of dispelling it with the uh, Chemical Rage, BKB. Alchemists don't go for Manta styles anymore. Like if you go, if you check the talents, they usually go for attack speed, the, the damage. Uh, even they even go for cleave. You and me discussed about it. Uh, cleave is. Uh, Kind of a substitution. If you get six slotted, then you can sell the radiance. Yeah, you don't really want to have that radiance when you go into like the yeah those late game stages of the game. It just doesn't feel like this carry build. You're it's like the old school radiance man octarine that split pushes and causes problems. You you want to have this build where you can actually kill people, which is more what we're seeing now with this BKB blink, blink. abyssal blade. Yeah, so you just blink on someone with the chemical rage. You have a really good positioning with the blink dagger, of course, yep. and the bash. Insanely good against the BKB carriers. Yep. Easier right now, they need those two BKBs. OD, oh, he only has a recipe. Gyrocopter, getting closer. 600 gold away from it. The timing from OG is insanely good. BKB is up on Alchemist. They, they want to make something happen. Yeah, right they now. blink in with the stun, the bar strike. They want to burst down fly here. It is just an Ogre Magi, but on the back lines, they're going to throw out a Ravage here, trying to turn this one around here, but Topson was inside the Astral, so he doesn't get hit by this. Ogre going to buy back, going to try to take this fight, but Topson's just charging in forward. He remnants in aggressively, using the Slide of Fist, constantly just nuking everyone Sam's down. Go Epi in. Center with the blink in as well. Who's he going for? He splits the targets, and with the BKB, takes out the Lina, changes targets. going to be a dieback from Fly's Ogre. He goes down, and Seb's not done with S4. That's four dead. Seb gets tipped by his teammate as OG. Roll over EG, four heroes dead. That's actually five dead because Ogre yep. brought back and died instantly. And OG is not gonna stop. They're gonna might even threaten the high ground. Arteezy does not have a cooldown. Flak Cannon is on a cooldown as well, but the, they're pinging Roche. It was this race to BKB. Ana getting his BKB before Arteezy's Gyrocopter just makes it so hard for e Arteezy and EG to take these fights. Yeah, he understands that he does not need a Blink Dagger this early on. BKB is so much more valuable because they don't have anything that goes through the BKB at the moment. And the amount of heal that they have with the Chen's Aura, Chemical Rage, the extra 20% increased healing plus a Hand of God, also Vlad's and Chen. Yep, EG can't take this fight. They have all the team fight items. EG have rotated in, but the Al Alk has already helped secure them an Aegis. Topson picking that one up as they are looking to just finish off S4 and the rest of EG, I think, realizing this is not a fight they want to take. And the problem is, Ravage is a long cooldown to play around. OG can just go take a fight now. We're only 19 minutes in, but they may even threaten high ground. And Jarek's God, Brown Boots, Lotus Orb, Disassembled, uh, Mana Boots. Oh. It's insanely good against the Gyrocopter. He can't use a homing missile against Ogre, against Lina, even Astral. They have so many single target spells that they can echo. Yeah, so we're just going to see them like pop this on the Alchemist and let him frontline, I imagine, at this point. Such a 
strong item to have this early in the game. And a very unconventional build, but one that makes so much sense right now. Thompson takes bounty runes, and this time it is OG for bounty runes. That is a very big sign of how this game has changed. EG were, you know, 5, 10, 15 oh, minutes in they getting... found crit on the bottom lane. Oh. He was just trying to do some split push the wave, hide in the trees. Yep. He's going to do what damage he can, but I think he knows he has got no real escape unless he jukes, and he will do so. Thompson actually has... Oh, yep, missed that slide of fist. All right. Crit gets out of there. Managed to maneuver his way through the trees, getting out of there, but Arteezy not so lucky. He goes down top. That was with the BKB. Seb, Epicenter, Barrow Strike, completed Pipe of Insight. So all of this AoE magic damage, which is Jira's primary source of damage since he's got just phase BKB, is going to be heavily negated by this yeah. pipe. One thing I always liked about Seb is his itemization. He understands it to, to a next level. When he was playing Mag, getting a Guardian Grief before a Blink Dagger, same goes for Pipe. And uh, this pipe will mitigate a ton of the magical damage that they have. Against the cooldown, against Rocket Barrage, Lina. It's looking all OG. Actually, it's a 17,000 network lead for them. <laughs> At 21 minutes, too. OG are playing such good Dota right now. Now, you can quote me on this one. The game is over when you have 1,000 gold lead per minute. Yeah. Well, they're not there yet. They, they have a bit more to go. As they are looking to just break onto the high ground. And there's just so little you can do. S4 does have Ravage back up. He's going to have to try and find some way into this fight to go for good Ravage. It's going to be just walking on in. He doesn't have a Blink Dagger or anything. And OG just going to stand here and hit some buildings. The Slide of Fist spam is just zoning them away. Rocket. Arteezy may have a BKB, but he's already half health. He doesn't want to fight. With the constant chip damage coming out from Slide of Fist, from the Stroke of Fate, from the Grimstock, those long-range AoE nukes just make it so difficult for EG to take a fight. They can kill the Shrines right now. Alchemist already TP bottom to push out the way. Will be TP'd back uh, if they want to take a fight with the Chen. He almost has enough gold to buy a full AC. That is very scary. I mean, you compare... Anna's net worth to his counterpart, the Arteezy Gyrocopter, and it is night and day. A carry hero gyro that's known for kind of dominating and coming online in the early to mid game has struggled to have an impact this game with the It's one of those smokes, guys, we gotta do something because we know we're in a bad spot. If we lose another fight, the game just ends. Yeah. OG playing on the other side of the map. The Alchemist was down there, but they're using this Chen Recall to just maneuver around the map, and now it's OG who are making their way down bottom. I think having an idea of where EG are playing on the map. There's a couple of towers down here they may want to go for as well. A Tier 1 and a Tier 2. Arteezy playing a bit greedy, going for another creep wave. He may just have to BKB TP out. He gets caught by an unstable concoction. Bar Strike follow up, and Arteezy is done for. Quick and easy kill. Crit just TPs out, leaving... Or it's easy to die, as he should have. There was no saving his life once he gets caught by that unstable concoction. And OG are just going to run down this bottom lane. Seb, Seb hunting them, yeah. trying to find something. <laughs> <laughs> he's just, he knows there's just no way EG can fight him. He's also unkillable with this 1800 health pipe four staff blink. Yeah, OG, what's the answer here? You mentioned 1k gold per minute advantage. We're about to get there. This tier 2 tower is going to probably take this up to about 23k gold lead. And it's Dota Plus 99%. EG, this, it's not what bug. is the one percent? Yesterday yeah, we yeah. had some bugs with 100%. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, there's 1% for EG, and they're going to have to dig deep to figure out where that 1% is. It is looking mighty difficult. They're going out, and he can't get the BKB off in time. He's getting chainsaw. This is the 1%. They take out the Alchemist. They start the fight off with a great kill on Alk, and they are going to repel OG here. Aegis expires as well. EG have picked their timing perfectly as the BKB Gyrocopter goes charging in. They're going to take out the Sand King of Seb as well, and that's the turn EG were looking for. That's what the high ground defense. from S4. The timing Woo! on that ulti was absolutely perfect. Man, he couldn't get the BKB up. Maybe OG execution there was a bit sloppy. I'm pretty sure we're going to see that fight fight again, but... Uh, ooh, there it is. It was... Yep. And the Lina stun from Fog, from Fog with yeah, Lance you... and the uh, cast range talent. You just don't see it coming. That is the power of this Lina build and why this hero is being played a lot as a four. 
It reminds me a lot of like the four position shaman with eighth lanes, where you're just able to stun or hex people in shaman's case from fog and they can't get BKBs off. Having these heroes that can play against BKBs from a support role is just so nice. Bounty runes being somewhat contested as EG managed to secure, secure down bottom top. Since rotated in, there's no BKB. It's still on cooldown for five seconds, but with the defensive astral, he should be able to get this off. Anna was looking for a stun, but the blink away from Sumail is there, but he's still getting very, very low. A couple of slider fists could finish him off. Doesn't look like Ember wants to chase. I think OG maybe learning to, you know, take their foot off the gas for a little bit here. They're still in a really good spot. Ravage is on cooldown for another minute. Roche may respawn in a minute and a half. Yep. I expect them to make a move. They already killed the shrines, so they can't be backstabbed unless they use a smoke. By the way, Anna has an Ag Scepter queued up, and this uh, Ember Spirit of Tops, I imagine, is the recipient. He had Ags himself queued to build, but now he's like, no, I'm not getting Ags. I'm going for a fast Octarine core. Maelstrom Octarine is not your everyday Ember build, but if you throw in a a pulled Aghanim Scepter, he's going to be incredibly scary and come online so fast. Yeah. Anna only needs a thousand gold to buy that Aghanim Scepter. Yep, he's already got the point boosters, so he's committing. I think they're basically trying to turn this Ember suddenly into this basically late game hero. When you can have Aghanim Scepter with Octarine Core, that reduced cooldown is going to be so scary. <laughs> I mean, they can play it safe. If they don't have to rush anything. Ravage is going to be ready once again. So they can just wait for the next Roche. Get the Aegis and Cheese. OG, 21k gold lead. But they've got to be careful. That unsuccessful high ground push definitely probably puts some doubts in their minds as to just how secure this game is. EG has no big items coming on their side. Yeah, OD has only Mystic Staff, still a lot of time to buy that Hex. Same goes for Gyro, they're just saving a buyback yeah. for now. That is the big item I feel that EG can use to turn this game. To play against like the BKB of the Alchemist and also to actually lock down and kill the Ember Spirit. Having this OD Hex would be massive for them, but it is still 2k plus gold away. Grimstroke is getting closer to Hex. He only needs 700 gold for it. That's crazy. I think, yeah, this... <laughs> I mean, it's four position. It's Jerex. He does get more farm than, you know, your everyday support, but he's going to have a Hex before the OD does, and he's got these two items that can have such a heavy impact on a team fight. Jerex is not happy about those mud golems. <laughs> <laughs> Looking for something. Easier to kill. He's going to stack some Ancients as well as the Mud Golem. Well, can. I know who's going to be happy about Mud Golems. Alchemist. Oh, yeah. Oh, they didn't get that stack, but he did get the Ancients. And there we go. Yeah, I believe he... Yep, he pulled the Ag Scepter. Ember. Level 17 only. Doesn't have the full 300 damage fire remnants yet. And smoke from EG. Oh, yeah, they're worried about... I imagine a Roshan, which yeah, can respawn any time now. So neither team knows when yeah, Rosh is know. respawning. But EG are worried that they're in the pit. Chen Creep scouting it out. Oh, they know where I, they I, are. They saw that yeah. one. It's being pinged out yep. by Chen. That Chen Creep <laughs> was right next to that D ward happening. And most teams are very, will notice that Sentry Ward randomly go missing from their, their map. So going for that D Sentry while smoke, not what you, you want to do, maybe. Ember Spirit just scouting things out with her Cane Rune and Ags. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so cheeky. And now Thompson, he's maybe going to look to pick off Fly here. They throw him with the Blink Ravage. Can they actually bring down the Ember Spirit? He's getting bursted here with the Chen Hills. Is it going to be enough? They take out Thompson. Instantly buys back. But Arteezy's already in with the Flat Cannon and the BKB. He's going to delete the Sankey. Buybacks from OG. They want to take this fight. And with Anna's BKB on Alchemist, they should be able to have this one. Anna, can he stun off Arteezy? He jukes in the trees. Finds a new target. Can, uh, uh, can he blink out of this one? He gets Burrow Strike. The timing from Seb is perfect as OG... They had to commit a couple of buybacks, but they do come out on top. And with Ravage down, with BKB Gyro down, I imagine they feel like they can actually break the high ground here. Look at the Ember Spirit. He's just gone balling in. Seb Bolt follows up. Two-man Barrow Strike. Arteezy's got no BKB to defend himself. Two mail. He's bought back. He uses defensive Astral, but I don't imagine Arteezy's got much of an escape. As soon as he comes out, he's popped like a piñata. Instantly has to buy back, but Anna 
Gyro should we'll be. Back off. I mean, Alchemist should be careful. He has a TP and Chen can recall him easily. Maybe waiting for Chemical Rage or perhaps just waiting for Roshan. They are yeah. still scouting this out. It's almost a max respawn. So I think they're going to be headed to this pit knowing that it basically has to respawn soon. And they're also headed back because four bound runes. Yeah. You've got four Alc. bounties with Alc. Easy peasy. That's a hex purchased on Jerex. Can they need to give this? EG uh, contest this. I don't think no. they can. And they need to give Aegis the Ember Spirit. He was playing a bit too aggressive, but he knows that he has a buyback. Yeah. As remnants in the fight can easily come back into a fight. EG. Yeah, they coming. Are they going to go for a steal? S4 Mayfield has to. He doesn't have Ravage, but he's too late. The second he sees the Roche die and he's not ready to steal it, EG have to disengage. Man, this game is slipping further and further away. Are, uh, uh, Lacoste, we're at that point. 31k That's gold in 30 minutes. Back it up. <laughs> the 1k gold minute. That's Alchemist in a nutshell for you. This hero's rate of farm is absolutely insane when you give him this kind of freedom. And, and that's a full Abyssal Blade. He's not even saving for a buyback here. Has a cheese in his backpack. It's, I mean, that's you talk about openings and the 1% chance for EG to win this game. That feels like one of those openings to win the game. And Alk not having buyback, not having Aegis as well. I mean, you give the Aegis to Ember because buyback's down, but... It doesn't matter if he has a buyback or not at this point, since EG has no tower damage whatsoever. They have Gyro True. and OD. And they still have so, a tier 1 tower on mid. Yeah, if they mess up a fight, you're not going to be... You're not going to lose your base for it, is what you're saying. Yes. Yeah. You're not going to even lose the racks. Isn't it? You can't lose one side. Seb. Position. Blink. Bar a strike. He just forces out. He's trying to bait some spells here. Topson falls it up as well with the slide of fist. Just trying to see what they can force out here. But back in the mid lane, Alchemist, he's gone in with a big blink BKB. He's going on Creek here. The right clicks with the BKB is going to be enough. And now Arteezy in trouble. He's been Abyssal Bladed up. He's locked in place. Where's the Bashes, says Anna. He doesn't quite find it. The Ravage is there. And Anna, he's got no buyback. He's going to be so careful not to go down here. But he's got so much health regen from the Chemical Raid. Two males wailing away on him. The right clicks is the Eclipse going to be enough. He doesn't have cheese. the damage. The cheese is there. And now Sumail getting bashed up. Stuns followed up. And GG, EG. Drop game one of this two game series. Oh gee, they Dumb played it. so well after the laning stage. Just uh, setting up the wards, dewarding their jungle so Alchemist can uh, get his farm. His laning yeah. stage was really not that great, but uh, they managed to, I'm not going to say come back, but give enough farm to Alchemist. And uh, that fight at Tier 1 Tower where they got outnumbered and fight, one fight after were actually crucial. Yeah, I mean, OG were just winning so many fights while the Alchemist farm. Yeah. Uh, normally what's expected to happen when you have these like, Alchemists, anti mages, these heroes are farming. Your team suffers because they're taking 4v5 fights, but it didn't feel like the case. I expected EG to play more aggressive with the smokes early on, try to find Alchemists. Yeah. They had the good vision on them, they just didn't make any rotations. And OG read it like they were dewarding everything, yeah. they just saw all the movements coming. Jerex, you mentioned the smoke breaker, played out of his, his mind. His positioning is actually yeah. insane, especially yeah. when he plays the Earth Spirit, when he can use the roll, get on the cliffs, uh, hide in the trees. Mm -hmm. It was a treat to watch some great Dota from OG, and that puts EG one win, four losses. Their group stage has started off very poorly. They need some wins, and they've got a game two coming up. So we're going to see if EG can bounce back, and if OG, well, if they're going to look, they're going to be looking for the 2-0 here, especially considering all the history between these two teams. Game two coming up after this.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It is EG OG here to start off day number two of group stages. OG destroyed them in game number one, Lacoste. Really extremely good performance by OG. Yeah. It, it, it was one-sided. After the six, there was seven a, minute mark. There was that uh, one glimmer of hope. That EG Lina, Lina stun yeah. from the fog and then follow up uh, with the Ravage. But other than that, uh, it just looked all OG. Why, why was it? Was it draft, play... Their map was awareness it? was so good, uh, breaking the smokes, the warding uh, pretty much every single ward that uh, EG had. And I think uh, the lack of EG's aggression towards uh, Alchemist, just to try to delay this uh, Radiance timing, block some of the camps, yep. it, it just didn't happen. Well, we're going to see what EG does to adjust as we hop ourselves into game number two draft. I think one of the other big things is Gyrocopter is kind of looking like one of the heroes and the carries of the tournament. But you think about EG and their playstyle. Arteezy is this guy that's way more comfortable playing more of the hard carries, the farmers. He's not this... as like, I don't think of him as an active carry player in the way like some of the other players and carries at this tournament are. Yeah, that's a good point, but the, right now this meta fits the fighting uh, carries where you want to be active early on. Yeah. I mean, he can, and the thing is, it's Arteezy. This guy can adjust. He's one of the, the best carry players in the world. So um, if he's going to have to adjust and adapt to play more Gyrocopter. I imagine EG throughout this tournament will get stronger. It's always been a bit of a story with EG is they have bad starts to tournaments. I mean, we talk, we said yesterday, it's EG day one. They have a slow start. Well, it's day two now. If you want to get in the winner bracket, you got to start winning because right now EG have one win, four losses. All right. This is a different approach from OG as a... From OG response, as well as EG. Yeah, I mean, as a response to Mag, usually I love to see, I personally love to see either Winter Wyvern, Enigma, where you get the top of the the RP, and the it's the same concept with Abaddon. Like, if you get caught in Mag ulti, you just pop the ulti, shield someone else, remove the stun, Dark Willow with the Terrorize when they group up around the RP. It's, uh, it's two good picks from EG. Considering that uh, OG already has a mag, and it was I mean, instant picks. Like yeah. These two were so EG. I, I like the confidence. What what's changed or what's what, I mean? You say two good picks from EG, but I feel like the idea of first two picking a baton is is crazy. That's something totally new. We haven't seen this here as like a first two pick. He had some small buffs. Um, I'm looking at some of the recent patches, like 7.22e, his Curse of Avernus debuff duration from four to five, and the most recent patch, the F patch. Base attack speed went from 115 to 120, and base armor from minus 2 to minus 1. <laughs> this poor dude just wants some armor. <laughs> well, a baton can be played as 3 again. That's that's the thing. Okay. And that's maybe, and I guess, particularly with the, you mentioned this item, Bassy Ring. That's an item that gives you armor, and that's something Abaddon needs in lane. So perhaps going to lane with that Sage's Mask that you turn into a Bassy Ring is uh, going to be the way to play this hero. Because... You imagine this is their 3-4 position, the Abaddon Willow? Like, those are laying together, or...? A Willow is... looks like a 4. That, it's that's, crit. Crit plays this yeah. hero so much. He's one of the best Willow players they in the world. They can still swap things around, put the Baton on 5. Uh, that's the beauty of these uh, picks okay. who can be played at multiple roles. And uh, OG took some time. They a lot think, of time. Yeah, Look at that reserve time. Holy yeah, crap. They didn't think uh, Juggernaut will survive. It's a great hero against uh, Dark Willow because... You have a spin out of uh, either Bramble or a Cursed Crown. Also, you build into Mantis style, so a lot of ways to dispel her stuff. Yeah, just naturally having some magic community makes yeah. it, makes it ni way nicer to play against the Willow. And they also need a and melee hero that benefits yeah. from Empower. The other hero that everyone always talks about is the Life Stealer, who has the built-in magic community. But Jug feels way better with Empower than Life Stealer does, so... I think that's why OG's first two yeah, picking so it. so right now OG's thinking that it's a bad in position 3 because they banned out uh, Elder Titan happen. and most of the teams are playing Elder Titan as position 5. Okay. EG themselves banning out Oracle, looking at some of those save options as well as just supports. It's something that uh, OG, unlike most teams, play in Jarex's hands, the 4 position role. So we'll see where they go um, instead as far as support options. But Magnus, what are you thinking? Uh, OG does like the three position mag. Seb, of course, um, you know, playing in TI Grand Finals last year. Uh, people may remember the axe, but it was the Magnus in the Game 5 decider that clinched the win for OG. There's a 
huge difference between Mag 4 and 5 because if you have another core who benefits from Empower on a mid lane, like he position 4 Magnus just feels way better because your job is to run yeah. around, stack camps, get a blink dagger timing uh, from that shared gold and uh, empower both of the cores. But if you're playing position 3, that means you're not going to be running around the map empowering your cores. You want to get the farm yourself. You want to get that either Guardian Greaves or a pipe. Okay. So if he's playing position 3, we're less likely to see like a mid laner that wants the empower as much. Yeah. We could just see a typical like, you know, Topson Invokers, the Zeus, if you want to go back to that TI Grand Finals. Um, so they may just settle for just the jug as the empower receiver or i mean magnus himself is like i'll just empower myself and hit, hit the jungle but as it stands og ban out the naga with the t looking at that or tz naga siren we'll see where these teams go very hard to kind of you know early days of ti groups these teams go for so long without playing any officials um there's only scrims which you know we don't have access to the viewers don't have access to and drafts change so much it feels like you always come to ti with no understanding of what teams are going to be uh, drafting. Like first you know, some of the heroes are going to be strong as expected, sure. like Shadow Demon, Enchantress, uh, Alchemist. Yeah, but like seeing a f first two Abaddon, like you know, no one was really predicting that one. I still example. feel like Winter Byron is a good pick. The only thing I'm concerned about for EG is uh, a bit lack of. Uh, silences and uh, stuns if they decide to go for it. It'll be Bane in instead. All right. It's I, a save I'm, as well. You know? It's a save and they needed something that pierces uh, Juggernaut yeah. spin so he can be just on a different side of the map split pushing. Yeah, I, that it ticks a lot of the boxes there. The the Blade the blade Fury piercing disable as well as that. It's yeah. not the best of saves. Like Nightmare can be hit or miss as far as how it's used as a save. Yeah, I was thinking about Winter Byron because you can stop his uh, spin and uh, also Juggernaut ulti is not that effective against Winter yeah. Byron's heal. Well, we'll see. Uh, Fly definitely playing the Bane as a five position. There's not really any other role that this Bane hero can fit into. And uh, OG now looking most likely for some of their own supports. Uh, we haven't, we don't quite know for sure whether Magnus is played as a four or a three. Um, but, you know, No Tails hero is what you'd kind of typically expect to see come out here with the third pick. Uh, if they open up, uh, I mean, open up. If they pick a position five, they're not going to reveal anything right now. What? Jarek's played this last game, so we'll see where that's going to go. And well, TZ didn't waste time. They insta picked Sven. They knew what they wanted, regardless of what OG took. Arteezy Sven, he's he's very. This is this is to me more Arteezy in his comfort zone. Like seeing him on the gyrocopter. You no, know, go back a few year, several years. He played a lot of gyro, but these days heroes like Sven, where you get two or three items and then you come online. Um, that's more the kind of Arteezy style of playing Dota. Yeah, there's a difference between Sven and the uh, gyro Sven usually just wants to join the fights uh, when ulti is up, farm up, as you said, three, four items. And I was wondering where this oh. little green skelly is. And uh, here he is. I mean, Pagna is just going to cripple Sven. It's so good. Also, Dark Willow, uh, her spells are really costly. Okay. I mean, this is this is a scary looking OG draft. With not that not to say there's anything wrong with EGs. You look at EGs and like Sven Bane, like this, they've got answers to the jug with the Bane. They've got a strong lane with this Dark Willow Abaddon. At least we think they do. We'll have to see just how that fares. So we'll see a Pugna in action. This has always been one of Topson's heroes, typically as well. There is a chance we see some kind of like a Pugna Magnus three four, but I would lean much more towards Pugna being the mid here. Yeah, it looks like it's bugging out. I mean, they can still swap things around. A lot of sustain with uh, Pagna's life drain and uh, Jug's healing ward. Yep. And they bad invokers, so they're actually considering... Well, <laughs> I was going to say considering Pugna being a three position and then a, a mid hero, but OG ran four position invoker. They had um, Jerex played as a support and... That's not the only support in Voku we've seen. There's been Team, a couple. Team Secret also plays. Yep, yep sorry. Going for this uh, Quaz Wex, Cold Snap, four position in Voku. Very pesky. And that would have actually fit quite nicely behind a Magnus. So a Kunkka band so looking at those mid laners. Kanka's looked really good this tournament. It seems like For sure. Kanka's the hero that you get two bracers. You become so tanky. And uh, once you hit level six, they need to bring two 
sometimes even three heroes if they want to kill you. Otherwise, yeah. you're not dying. The magical resistance from two bracers and the HP plus a rum. Yeah. You're super tanky. None of your spells cost that much mana, so playing Kunk into Pugna, you feel good about it, and you can you have multiple ways to cancel his yeah. life drain. Even if we get uh, stomped, let's say, between second and fourth minute, you can always just X mark yourself, TP back, then you're yeah. going to play around the shrines if it's needed, so you, you have enough sustain. Shaker. Here we go. This guy always makes way, his way back into TI. May disappear throughout the year. Not that he has disappeared throughout the year, but Earthshaker, one of the iconic TI heroes. Most likely Jarek's really playing him. And that's OG thinking it is the absolutely perfect pick for this game. So they need a mid hero. It, it looks like it's uh, definitely plugging a mid. So they know yep. the matchup. Are you looking for a lane counter, or just want something that fits your draft? If you're Puck could be a good pickup, or Ember? or this, yeah, something yep. uh, elusive because they don't have a lot of lockdown. There's an Earth Shaker, yes, but uh, he needs to commit hard to actually get a kill on Ember Spirit. Okay. So we'll see Sumail playing Ember Spirit, one of the more prominently picked heroes of this tournament. The flexibility between Ember being a mid laner as well as a safe laner, part of that, but also just. A well, all around strong hero that comes online nice and early with this max slider fist that you can just spam. The constant chip damage just adds up throughout a team fight. That's for OG. Sh Shaker Magnus is not really the scariest of dual lanes. If anything, you're just maybe looking at Shaker like what, pulling waves or messing with the cre creep equilibrium using Fissure. Doesn't really feel like that dual lane that's going to actually be able to. Yeah, there's not going to be too much kill potential on that lane. Unless they get a good block and then maybe skewer under the, ta under the tower. But as you mentioned, uh, they'll probably try to drag the creeps under their tower, just farm up and uh, focus on, uh, on the top lane. There's a lot of kill potential since you can use the Ink Swell on uh, magic immune units now. So yep. spin plus Ink Swell, pretty deadly. Ah, uh, yeah, it's, yeah, probably would be a big part why they wanted this Grimstroke. Because it is going to be a five position on the four that we saw last game. Um, but you got to imagine this game, Arteezy sees this lane, he's probably thinking, I'm free farming. Like, you're playing Sven into a Shaker Magnus lane, there is nothing they can do to contest your farm. So, he's probably looking like a happy farmer this game, and you can have Fly, you know, this is one of those five positions that loves to sack the jungle camps as well. So, should be a good game. I feel like EG, to me, have a better, more well-rounded draft. Um... And that's more in their comfort zone. It's not just about, you know, whether how their drafts match up against their opponents, but this feels much more like an EG style of draft. I have a theory, like if a Baden can get Aghanim Scepter here, you, you shoot coils in the 1600 range if you get Ags. Okay. So you just need to be around the RP. And uh, I, I don't think anyone's gonna die if it comes to that yeah. one point where, where you can get the Ag. There's always a better item choice choice especially for the start but uh, we'll see how this game goes all right well here we go it is game two of og versus eg two teams looking to find themselves in the winner bracket that's always the key thing with ti groups you know winning the group is nice if you're one of those teams that can pick your opponent and you win that first round of the winner bracket that suddenly you find yourself in the top six but starting lower bracket in best of ones is like the worst case scenario for any team but actually worst case scenario is you don't make it to the next day <laughs> uh, we don't talk about that but uh um I mean, these are two teams you wouldn't expect to see eliminate from the groups. Uh, uh, definitely not, but EG right now is in a really tough spot. They won one out of five games. Yeah. So they need some wins. Plenty of Dota left to be played. You play, what, 16 games total, right? You play against eight other opponents, two games? Yeah, you play 16 games total. So they've still got 11 games left, you know. Four-day groups. It's a, lo it's a marathon. This isn't a sprint. You can have a bad day one. And you're still fine. What's Pugna up to there? Just taking the tower shot casually. Has a crown starting item. Thompson going all in on the early game stats. Looking to rush that veil, of course. <laughs> we'll see. That, that's an interesting build. Yeah, no, normally, yeah. Null talisman, Null talisman, of course, yeah. But he's just going to get a faster veil. Slightly less damage, but you can use Nether Blast for the last hits. What's Seb going to do? Is he going to level up the skewer to secure this rune, or...? Ooh, Seb, can he get it? The stun is there, and he's going to lose... That bounty rune, while it's gonna be his team two take. for two. Yeah. Uh, no, it was uh, three for one. S4 stole one. 
he ran in, it looks like, and grabbed uh, one of the enemy ones. So Wow, I don't think EG knows how to count to three, but they got three runes. Oh, EG, they know exactly. That. Three is their number. That's, that's Valve here, how to count yep. three. <laughs> Dark Willow. Also starts with Sage Mask. Yep, expecting that, that Bassy. So it won't be the Abaddon who gets the the Bassy, but it will be on the Dark Willow. So as we come to expect, a lot of these off lane, the dual lanes with Bassy Ring. It's going to be Willow with the Abaddon. They've got the Aphotic Shield early. One way to play against this lane, perhaps, is they're just going to have such great defensive capabilities with the Aphotic Shield, and you've got the Shadow Realm on the Dark Willow. Dark Willow, who then manages to block that pull camp. No tail coming in with a stroke of fate. Training hits here, looking to push crit out of this lane. And he's got a fish support here. They could find themselves with an early first blood if they get a couple more right clicks and a stroke of fate. One more right click with a stroke of fate. He may not even need it. He does need it because there's an aphotic shield, and that's going to save crit's life as Anna also helps to zone out S4 with some extra right clicks. So they don't get the kill. S4 came in just in time. And Juggernaut has crit level one instead of a spin. Okay. Because he's just trading hits against the melee hero. Yep. This is something, yeah, we we see sometimes in these melee versus melee matchups where the crit is single target damage is better than the spin. Level one, you don't necessarily go for the kill. You don't even have any points in the ink swell yet, so. Nana just wants that 20% crit chance. Brambles coming out to try and mess with some of the last hits and secure this lane a bit. But here comes Jerax with these crits. If he gets the block in, he blocks his forward, doesn't hit him with the stun, but he's completely surrounded. Now he levels up the spin. They are looking for this kill, but Jerax saying very low. The Stroke of Fate is there, and Anna should be able to get the first blood. Gets the kill just before No Tail goes down. That's a shared bounty. Nice and little sidestep from Abaddon to not get stunned at least, but uh, yeah. with that block, there's nothing he can do about it. Ember Spirit picked up a haste rune on the mid lane. Not the, the scariest of, of things, perhaps, but we'll see a, a full-on try lane from OG. Thompson, is he going to get killed here by Sumail? The decrypt is there with a nether blast. One or two more right clicks. Thompson has a tango. He tried to go for the tree block. Oh, that would have been so good if it worked. Ember Spirit had a quelling blade, so I don't think that would have mattered. And uh, now Ember Spirit has enough money to buy a bottle after this creep. So... Yeah, it doesn't have to go for that suicide to tower play that you often see when these mid-solo kills happen. Thompson tries to find the D-Ward mid, but guess is wrong, and the Dire Ward is on the other side as bottom lane. Ah, they get another kill on S4. This try lane finding a lot of action early on. Yeah, dire Vision, two Dire Wards around this mid lane. They really want to make sure Sumail doesn't get pressured and given too bad of a time early on. Yeah, and Sumail flies out the courier to the side, to the secret shop. Uh, to actually get a bottle faster. Meanwhile, in the top lane, it's Seb who's alone. A lot of kill potential from Bane and Sven. He can't really TP out. He's having a, a good start until that death, though. He's got 9 CS. He's level 3 and a half, so... Despite the death there, it has been an okay lane, in a, considering it's a 1v2. Decrep, just for some extra fissure damage, as Thompson doesn't go for the Nether Blast. I think knowing that... Uh, the Slider Fist can be used to dodge that Nether Blast. We're seeing it again here as uh, bottom lane Anna actually goes down. Crit Stark Willow finding that kill. They need to control the runes, both of the mids. Yep. Okay, actually, Thompson bought a Helm instead of a bottle. Wow, he is really rushing this Veil as soon as possible. He's going to have it before he even hits level 6. He's, he's looking to set some some records on fastest Veil timing, it seems. Thompson mid. Uh-oh, he's in trouble. Throws out the decrep to push Sumail back, but we not see that kill coming out. Let's fly up to you. This is just probably jungle stacks. You know, you've got a Sven on your team. Sven doesn't really need too much help to free farm this lane anymore, but if you want to bully Seb out of the lane, you definitely can't see Sven do that alone, but... The priority may be much more on just giving our TZ a bit more farm, and yeah, Fly's just like, all right. I think Fly's just gonna stack some camps, uh, go for the bounties. Shaker had an Seems illusion. like it's gonna be, uh, again, three for EG. One, two, three, yep. Fly got some stacks along the way. 
There was a Shaker Illusion rune you could have done some stacks with, but it looks like he was prioritized more on those bounty runes at the time. Screw it back to the high ground, save gets back to safety, and things settling down here in the lane stage, but EG, 2k gold lead already. This lane stage has been very favorable for them with the kills they're getting, with the farm they're securing. Sven, RTZ absolutely free farming, but they've got to be careful. Here comes Anna again in this bottom lane. He's got the Inkswell stun, and one or two more right clicks might be enough, but the sun immediately dispels off by the Aphotic Shield, but the Blade Fury allowing him to chase through the Shadow Realm, and the damage from the magic is enough. Anna gets the Healing Ward in the trees here, so he's healing up, but he's completely trapped and surrounded. He's trying to turn and fight. The Healing Ward, not enough there, just level one. And now no tail. He needs to be careful himself. Uh, no tail is dead. The yep. first shaker doesn't have a Fisher. He does. Got a totem pulled up by Fisher. They are looking to turn this one. No tail with the Inkswell stun. He's got one kill. He's getting a second. This healing ward is causing all kinds of problems. The stroke of fate Whoa. as well. A no tail with the double kill. A Baden had the aphotic shield ready. Oh, he just completely underestimated the damage as well as the Inkswell. The stats That's actually the huge. No tail got two kills. Now he's sitting at the a thousand gold. Six minutes in. So much for uh, being a five position. I mean, he's going to immediately turn that gold just into wards and boots, but still. That healing ward was so underrated as well. I don't even know if they realized the healing ward was there because they killed Anna despite it doing some healing. But it came into play later on for those supports who managed to get the better of the EG aggression. Level 7 Ember Pugna. Level 7 <laughs> himself. I mean, someone should post this on Reddit. The he check the hero. Who, who's, whose hero is this? If you just cut off the Pugna, whale. yeah, Branch and yeah. the Whale, TI edition. <laughs> Guess the MMR. <laughs> you would not expect, yeah, I mean, this, this is just a new style of play and build coming out from Thompson. Well, Thompson was that. always a guy who was inventing things in Dota. Yes. He, he plays Dota his way, and that's something I think OG have always really liked with players they picked up. When they picked up Ana, it was something they said, it's like, this guy just plays Dota his way. He's not just looking to follow the meta, he's looking to kind of create the way heroes are played. And Topson, he took that to the next level. His Invoker, the Meteor Hammer Invoker, probably the one that he's most well known for, uh, it kind of inventing. But here he is with a Naked Veil plus Single Branch. Although he's now turned that into some Brown Boots. Oh, they should know something is up, Bane. You'd expect a ward somewhere. The question yeah. is, will you find it on this hill? They have a sentry on the hill, so they know it's not there. It's for down bottom, it looks like this is a lane that OG kind of had to vacate a little bit. They can't really spend much time contesting it. And it's just going to be falling back to the jungle, I imagine. Mid lane, Topson, uh-oh. He's been gone on here. He's got the life drain. He's trying to get the Willow, but Willow gets out of range for it, so he will end up going down to the Slider Fist. Nice attempt by Topson to turn it around. But going for the life drain on a hero that was at such a long range meant that it could be easily bro broken. Haste rune at bottom. If Ember Spirit gets that, Bane is just guarding it. He can easily gank the side lane. Uh oh. No tail. This is not a lane. You want to really be in at this point if you're OG, but that's why they send their five position down there. Yeah, no tails. that's going to be a free tier one tower on the yeah. bottom lane. I mean, his job is just to try and defend this and keep it alive as long as possible using Stroke of Fate, but EG understanding that, punish him and followed up by claiming a tier one tower. Or TZ with the last hit. That's almost his Midas complete. Nine minute Midas phase boots wand. Really good timing on his items as top lane. I just found another kill. RP used. I mean, it's. 9 minute mark, you're gonna use it uh, to get a single kill. Same goes for Enigma and the Black Hole. Whenever it's ready, if you can get something happen, you should do it. Well, no, no tails here, the scan connected, so... Looks like Arteezy is looking to come in from behind. They're just gonna go diving for this kill. Slider Fist to start with some damage to Fisher. We'll catch them out a little bit here. Remnant on forward, Arteezy's got the stun, and this should be a dead no tail. He goes for one last stroke of fate, but won't get a chance to throw it out before he dies. Jarex is being ran at. Ace Rune Ember. But he's out of mana. Oh, he jukes it. Sumail with the the read. Sees the two pump fakes and jukes the actual totem, but how is that dropping and dropping fast? Pops in. It's up to him to come in and respond to this one. There is a Fissure. S4. Has got the level 6. He can level up the borrowed time, and yep, he's going to choose to do so. But he's been stunned up, and I think he may just die here if he's not careful. He does have the stun from Arteza to help him out. Topson 
is still looking to chase. Nether Blast is there, but there's no life drain, so raindrop. Yep. And the Bracer will keep him alive. He also has a flask in the backpack, will heal himself fully. Looks like bounty uh, runes spawning. All bounty runes? That was four, four bounty bounties runes, for yeah. EG. Okay, and yeah, Anna was not able to get either of those top ones. It was crit getting both. And unlike last game, this time around it's EG with a much better laning stage. And it's not necessarily entirely off of aggression, although we have seen Arteezy move around the map from top down to bottom to push to mid. Uh, but it's very much around also balancing out the aggression with farming. Um, Arteezy with the Midas, the stacks as well in the jungle. They are playing nice and efficient Dota as well. Thompson, he's really deep here. He's really dead. Yeah. I mean, Out of the position, trying to make too much happen. EG, 4,000 network lead, 11 minutes in. But they have two supports who can't really shout out the waves. Yeah. Th these are like two worst heroes. Mana, TP's in with the Blade Fury on. It was just to get himself out of a precarious position. And you know, OG's lineup, you're looking at Empower Jug. You're looking at defending with RP. They can. This is the kind of draft that will play from behind and all it takes is one team fight to turn this game. Exactly, but there's this uncontested Sven who has Hand of Midas, level nine. It's going to be a really different game from what Arteezy had in game yeah. number one. No, this is not going to be the Arteezy struggle that we had. Game one, it was like he's tr he knew he had to fight as a gyrocopter and the fights they were taking weren't working out for them. So he wasn't farming, he wasn't getting kills, but this time around, he's getting kills and he's farming creeps. He's 3 0 and 2 while having stacks to farm and taking over the jungle as well. Samael also 3 0 and 2 on his Ember Spirit, the EG core duo having a fantastic start here. You can see what kind of game OG is playing right now. Well, can you? I mean, they don't have a single Grip observer it. board over the river. They've gone in on No-Tail here with the grip here. No-Tail is staying alive here. The RP comes just to cancel that grip, although it was about to wear off. Sumail's going to be a little bit careful. Gets caught by the Inkswell stun. Is he going to go for this kill? Has a slide of fist, cancels the salve. Sumail isn't going to commit for the kill. As Dyer lose that Curry in mid. I believe Tower Shot's just finishing him off, and Sumail has remnants here. What's he up to? Plenty of mana just to remnant away, and I don't think they're going to be able to get this kill. Slide of fist, remnant away, and they're going to pop the shrine. A courier kill, no hero kills. Yeah, so Arteezy, oh man, it was uh, full Echo Saber. All right, he's actually oh, missing yeah. Ogre Axe. But he's going to have to. He's or it could be a full away. Echo Saber. Because he might just queue up uh, Ogre Axe for a BKB. Yeah. Four. It's being skewered back towards his T1 mid tower. He should be able to maybe bring him down when this borrowed time ends, but I don't think they want to hard commit for this one. They are throwing nukes here. They still want this S4 kill. Anna's going in with the Blade Fury, but they haven't got the kill. They're going to be forced to back off. Omni Slash still available, but if you commit that Omni Slash aggressively, you're probably dying and unsure if you even get the kill. I estimate the probability of winning to be above 99%. No tail's confident. I don't know if our friend Dota Plus agrees. He says 39%. Dota Plus thinking they, things they are a bit more EG They need only 60% more, huh? Yeah. <laughs> no, no tells like, I, I did the math. Oh, OG no. does not want to take a fight right now. They yeah. want to finish the items. Uh, they want uh, any item on Seb. He's going for Pipe. And the uh, Earthshaker needs a thousand gold to finish off his Blink Dagger. Right now, they're in a really spot where they just, just want to farm. With the Empower on Jug. Get a couple of items. I mean, this jug is, yeah, just going from neutrals to neutrals. Wants to get that at least Manta style as a defensive tool. And for EG, you know, you can match this farm. If anything, you can kind of outpace it with the Sven Midas, although the Echo Saber being removed also does make that harder. And Topson again finds a kill on crit here in the mid lane. This early veil with the damage jam causing a lot of problems. making a fairly bold move into this enemy jungle. Just trying to scout out some of these stacks to see what's going on. Sven's turning this on with a stun, though. 
Have they got any follow-up lockdown? Doesn't look like it. The Bane not quite here, at least not right now. Jerk's charging on forward, has the turn. They're trying to bait out this borrowed time. Echo Slam comes in, doesn't do a whole lot of damage. Barely clips RTZ and S4. Borrowed times it off here as RTZ does pop the God Strike. Is he going to look to go in and fight? The Skewer is there, followed by Narpi, but the Fear! It stops the Omni Slash. That saves their lives here. They stood, could still look to turn this one around. Anna goes in with the Healing Ward, but without the Omni Slash on the RP, Crit saves the day. The Healing Ward gets sniped as well by Sumail. He does manage to dodge the stun from the Storm Bolt here as Anna goes charging forward here. The Blade Fury damage should be enough with the Omni Slash follow up. He doesn't even need the Omni Slash. He finds it now. He gets the double kill. Anna playing this fight so incredibly well on the back lines. He's been nightmared up though. Sumail still like chasing. This kill. Looks like Anna's gonna be back to safety as Sumail. Yeah, he's gonna slide a fist down the Pugna. Sumail on a mega kill streak. Sumail can do whatever he wants in this fight because he has a baton behind him to back him up with the Aphotic Shield and uh, nice grip from the Bane, but the, from the high ground. But this is not the target that you want to go for. It was OG Our, yeah. coming out on top of that fight in terms of gold though, even though it was a three for two. Once Mag uses the RP, you do not want to focus him after that. It was such a good uh, fear coming out from Dark Willow. If not for that, Anna had an Omni Slash, or even just right clicks on top of the RP. That would have been such a good team fight for OG. Even so, Anna's very happy with the outcome. He got two big kills in that fight. Sven and Abaddon. He killed two cores. That's why OG got so much gold out of that, despite it being a two for three trade, numbers favoring EG as far as the kills, total kills go. Anna has a defusal blade right now, so that's gonna help him out uh, to have the extra slow, extra yeah. kill potential on uh, whoever. Crit it's has Yule Scepter. This Dark Willow will be really hard to kill, especially with a Baton on the team. They have got several nukes that can go through the Shadow Realm. Looking, I mean, they have a lot of nukes. I mean, every hero has spells that go through it, in fact. Blade Fury, Stroke of Fate, Fissures, Shockwaves, Nether Blasts. But, you know, it's still a Willow. It's still a very pesky, annoying hero. Vlad's picked up by S4, so he's going to be just seeing all those teamfight items coming out from the offlaners. As far as Abaddon and even the Magnus with the hood completed, looking for that fast pipe. Oh, things looking down bottom. Seb could be in some trouble here. Yeah. Yules into Bramble. They pop the God Strength. Instantly the tips come into play. Yeah, I don't think they needed the God Strength, but uh, no. still. They're just going to pressure the bottom tower a little bit. These two supports from EG, they're not good at killing creeps, but they're really good at killing every single time the ult is up at a Fiend's Grip, or when you have a Bedlam, now he has a pretty easy setup with the uh, Curse Crown into yeah. the ult Scepter. So EG won this tier 1 mid tower, but they lost their creep wave. Instead, we may just see them... <sighs> yeah, he knows there's a ward there. He's, the, the tower hit should not have reached him, so... The ward gets revealed, but it also expires, so... EG will not find any D ward money for themselves. A tier 1 mid tower claim, so both teams losing their tier 1 mid, such a crucial tower and objective to be looking for. Oh, double damage, jug, smoke. Oh. Right into Roshan they go. Do Dyer know this? There's pink, I think there's a Radiant Pinks coming out, I don't believe EG actually... They don't know what's happening. Yeah. There's such good Radiant Vision, and Seb's positioned on the outside of the pit. He wants to be able to, you know, scout now, your... Oh, now oh, he's they inside. Know. Yeah. But it's gonna be too late. Tops in. Fear. Heads himself out. They need to get that fear in soon. I believe they're going to be a little bit too late here. Can Crit get in on time? He's got a Blade Fury as well if he needs to use it. Anna's trying to get it low. There is going to be a Remnant into the pit. He comes in too late. Anna's already got it. Anna picked up the Aegis as well as the Roshan kill. And OG want to take this fight. Now they've got an Aegis. They take out the Dark World to start the fight. Arteezy comes in the back line, goes on the Pugna, but the problem is he's got no solution for the decrep. There's no BKB. He's being RP'd RP. now as well. The RP catches out a couple here. Anna charging forward. He's still got Omni Slash, but he doesn't want to commit that on Sumail. But he does once he's burned his mana. He knows there was no fire running out. He burned his mana with the Diffusal Blade. He's hit, killed off three. S4 now in trouble. No borrowed time available. They're killing him one by one. Jerex tips S4. I think they know this Swede has no escape to the Diffusal Blade slow. S4 is going to be the fourth casualty. Arteezy got RP'd. He does survive, but that's because OG were focusing on the rest of the kills. It's a really risky play, but I think Dark Willow should have gone for Terrorize inside the Roche Pit after that. Tried to use the Bramble to get some vision, but uh, also Sumail went in with the Remnants uh, to get a 
Roche kill, maybe even get the Aegis, but Anna still has the Aegis. Now they're gonna pick up uh, four bounties. Jerex has a blink dagger and an ulti. They can still take this fight. Yeah, it's like there's bounties at spawn, and I think part of them is like, oh, we gotta fall back and ba get bounties. But then they're also like, wait, we're really strong right now. Let's let's take a fight, maybe. Jerex with a blink dagger position on the high ground stops Fly from entering his own jungle, but it does look like yeah, they're gonna reset. They're gonna fall back, take some bounty runes. They should try and take another fight while they're still weak. Or they can wait for Mag's RP and the pipe. He just needs to use the courier. 40 seconds until next RP. Do they have another smoke? They do. And also Grimstroke hit the level 10 a couple of minutes ago. So he's good to play this game. I feel like the supports with GPM talents are probably the strongest ones. Like Ogre, Wyvern, Grimstroke. Grimstroke's happy camper with his GPM talent. See Anna taking uncontested tier 2 tower top. Sven doing what he can mid. He's got the blink dagger, so not the easiest here to go find. Arteezy, it feels like the same problem as last game. A very different game overall, but it's this BKB timing of his that just comes a little bit too late. He needed it like for that fight there in order to take a team fight. Either that or a Abaddon needs to take care of him. Yeah. And again, he can't really defend. He's going in on the back lines here. He's looking for the Pugna. Can he finish him off? Topson. He's got a decrypt to help him out. He's got the ward on the high ground as well as a life drain. He's got the double life drain as well with the soul fight. He's healing so much because of this. S4's borrowed time comes up, but Topson's back to full health. And they've lost the Shaker though, but OG still want to take this fight with the Aegis in hand. Unfortunately for them, EG repositioned on the high ground. The two man stun coming out with the storm hammer. And Ortiz's absolutely deleted seven. The Aegis popping on Hannah means he could be in trouble when he comes out of this one. There's no fiend script to deal with him. The Omni Slash is there. He's bouncing around. He's not actually going to get the bounce into the three heroes. He goes for the Blade Fury TP instead. They're that still Omni chasing. Slash. Do they have it? Yes. Yeah. There's the Yule Scepter. And EG, ultra kill for Ortiz. Well. You mentioned he needs Abaddon to take care of him. Arteezy just says, I'll take care of myself. He hits multiple hero stuns with his Storm Hammer, catches out the back lines. Really well played team fight by Arteezy. Yeah, OG positioning in this particular fight was not that good. Also, Jarex got caught before he could get the, an echo off. Yeah. The Jug only did 500 damage. That Omni Slash, it was a Abaddon that was, I think, Decrypt or something. He just did no damage there. And the other two heroes that were nearby were just ever so slightly out of range, so we didn't actually bounce them with the Omni Slash. Not the fight OG were hoping for. But this is exactly what they needed. EG punished that uh, mistake from OG. Also, there was a really good uh, fear on top of it. It was, I think, three or four man fear. And it's a fight where we didn't see the high impact ulties of OG. There was you know, the no RP, RP. Yeah. the Echo Slam. Jerex was the first to die. Seb never found an RP. Doesn't have Blink Dagger. And it feels like those are tools that they need to find a way to have them come into play in these team fights. As much as it looked good, like Topson with that double life drain with the Soul Bind, healing himself back up to full, it felt like Arteezy's initiation didn't really succeed. It doesn't amount to much when you still can't find an Echo or an RP. OG can still take this fight. Uh, oh, yeah. For sure, they just need to position themselves properly. It feels like it's going to be a smoke. Put a sentry ward. The lanes, uh, bottom lane is not pushed out. Top and middle lane is uh, in a decent spot. But there's uh, a counter smoke from EG. TZ yep. leading the way with that blink BKB now. So this next fight's with the BKB and that's where life gets even harder. They've got to protect their... Magnus or Shaker needs to get off a good ultimate. Ideally, both. Oh, they see all that ward get planted, I want to say. And yeah, they know exactly where they are. Anna just goes charging in forward. Gets the slow from the defusal. The inhibit, as it's called. If someone asks you what the inhibit is, would you know? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm a item connoisseur when it comes to Dota. No, not really. What's the pipe? Active barrier. That's pipe. But yeah, inhi inhibits one of those really random ones. What's Veil called? Magic weakness. I did not know that. <laughs> <laughs> you just, I just thought you just Veil someone, but <laughs> apparently you use magic weakness on them. 
Smoke is not actually smoke, it's disguise. <laughs> wow. You, you should stop, guys. I, I'm feeling really stupid right now. <laughs> I didn't know this. I was feeling stupid. I read these, I'm like, what? I just thought it was, the active was called smoke. <laughs> What's BKB's active called? Avatar? <laughs> Did you know it's called Avatar? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm being. I feel like this has just changed, right? Surely it wasn't. It, this hasn't always been Avatar. <laughs> Soul Ring active called Sacrifice. Okay. Well, that, that makes, makes a sense. lot of sense. Oh, smoking Anna, leading the way, finds Fly. He's going to instantly delete him. As RTC jumps on the back lines, he gets the two men stuff, but the RP is there just to come around. The Omni Slash is going to go on through, doing some good damage here. Fear looking for the back lines will catch out a couple. Actually catches out Anna as the Omni Slash wears off, but RTZ is so incredibly low, looking for a blink out, I imagine. Or even a blink back in. Topson, he gets killed off by RTZ Stormhammer. Jug looking for gun down crit here. Anna needs a couple more right clicks, but he's being gripped up now. Skewer is there, cancels the Fiend's grip. Nicely played by Magnus, keeping him alive. As that's going to force out a remnant just to escape here. Seb charging on forward. They should be able to at least finish off the Bane here. And Jarek's knows that's a dead Bane. He's looking for more. He blinks past, but... There's no fresh targets to go for. A I think EG is fine him. with that. Uh, even though Bane died back there, they still forced the buyback out of Pagna. Okay. And uh, I love what uh, Anna did there. He instantly uses Omni Slash on Sven, so he can't take the fight. Even though he popped the God Strength, he was on half HP, can't really come back, especially if a Baron is not healing him. They're still going to try and push this one. They pull back the Pugna, but they feel confident. And on the front lines, it's just so tanky with this Scotty Manta style. Just getting a tier 3 tower will allow them to take some shrines as well. Anna goes for the Blade Fury, doing what damage he can with the Nether Blast. He'll actually look to commit onto RTZ, who doesn't have God Strength still. So some good damage being dealt here with the Siege Creep and the Nether Blast. This tower is down to 260 health. Anna wants back in. He wants to finish this one off, and he's going to succeed. Healing Ward is ready. Don't... Have to pressure, force it and go for the Raxay OG. They're going to back off and go for these shrines. Prioritizing that top shrine. The ones near Roshan. Uh, they... Rosh will spawn in 30 seconds. That's a quick spawn. They're going to have their ultis up when the Rosh spawns. Yep. Talk about supports with GPM. Dark Willow hits level 15 and gets hers. They're not willing to hard commit for the shrine. They threw some Nether Blast, but Anna did not want to right-click it as... Knowing EG have God Strength back up. That was very much the timing. They go for that high ground push. It was 20, 30 seconds without God Strength. And as a result, EG could not defend their tier three. But this Roche fight is going to be so hotly contested. Fighting around Roshan, this is where buybacks really come into play. And Pugna, buyback on cooldown means Thompson has to play this Roche fight incredibly cautiously. Oh, Sumail's just going to go remnanting in. They get the two man roots. Is there a fear to follow it up? You betcha. Catches out two. Jerex is in trouble. He's been taken out by RTZ, instantly buys back, but they've also lost No Tail, who does not have a buyback. And Thompson, we talked about his buyback stats. He's dead for 75. This could be EG securing themselves Roshan. Anna's been slept up. Is there a Fiend script? It's on cooldown. It's already been used. Anna's got the Blade Fury. Anna still has ulti. Yeah, he's Ember getting... Spirit's out of the remnant. Yeah, they throw out the RP. That's going to be a nightmare to try and save him. Sumail's out of mana. Sumail's dead, and they're going to lose Sven as well. Anna with a double kill for his team. Only got the one kill. Godlike streak on RTZ is ended as S4 does not have borrowed time, and the Blade Fury is just going to look to chase him down. Jerex with the stuns. His buyback coming into play there. They should go straight into Roche, but they still have a healing ward. I'm not angry. EG, they got way too confident there with uh, Pagana, who had no buyback. Grimstroke as well. But with one good Echo Slam and Anna with ulti. Also, Ember Spirit had no remnants to fall back yeah. to. They used so much of their control to kill the rest of OG that Anna, he was nightmared up there, but they didn't have any follow-up stuns. Ateezy was either, either out of mana or just didn't have his Storm Hammer up because Anna, the second that nightmare wore off, just Blade Fury back safely, re-engaged, and destroyed them with the RP. Yeah, and with the Scotty, this is one of the best items you can get uh, against the Sven. Yeah. Also, he's sitting on 40-plus uh, armor on Juggernaut, so Sven can't really focus him down. Almost uh, 3,000 HP. 3,000 plus gold on Jerex as well. He managed to end Arteezy's godlike streak. Got 1,300 gold. And he's filthy rich. He did have to buy back. So this is where you have Aegis on OG's side, but you've got to be careful. Earthshaker, Pugna, no buybacks. Anna, though, in the front lines with an Aegis. He is going to be the one that looks to just break the high ground. So even though Anna's got buyback, they still give him the Aegis because of the style of play that we're going to be seeing from OG, where they want to have this jug. He's the one sieging. He's the one that benefits most from an Aegis. I 
And they could wait for that uh, butterfly and then go see the high ground. It's a really big item. He's getting close to it, only needs uh, 1500 gold to finish it. As you mentioned, that butterfly coming soon. Also, the Jug's 25, so... With all this armor on Jug, just doesn't feel like the Sven is going to match up against him. He has got a Bloodthorn queued up on Arteezy, so... A way of dealing with some of that evasion, but... Gotta be careful. Sumail, he's being spotted by this Observer Ward. Are they going to hunt him? Looks like that may be the call. Can they chain stun him? Jerex? Oh, he was about yeah. to blink in an echo, but the uh, blink got cancelled by yeah. slight. Bottom lane is being pushed in. Yeah, it looks like they're just going to go back and push this one out. The one thing I noticed uh, from the yesterday is that uh, a lot of safe lane towers are being killed 20, 25 plus minutes in. Look, OG's tier 1 tower on top still standing. Yeah. And they just killed it safe lane tower on the bottom. Yeah, it's just not a priority to play around that part of the map. Here you go, Anna. He gets the butterfly level 24 and a half. He may wait for level 25 before they go for the high ground push. Aegis still with three minutes left on it, so good healthy window for him to keep on farming for a minute or two if they want to, but Shaker's actually staying up top. OG's laying a trap. They're going to show a lot. Well, not really showing these heroes, but maybe they're expecting to be scouted up by a ward or something. They're showing the jug, so I think the expectation is that this top lane is a safe lane to push, but eventually, Jarex says... Jarex was there. There was a huge creep wave. If someone yeah. overcommitted, he could have gotten a solo kill. No one on EG was willing to go for that tower. I think recognizing, you know, this Shaker is not showing on the map. If you don't see Shaker, you can't really go for that push. Even now, they're, they're, they're like hiding in the trees, and Arteezy only blinks out because he's got several teammates, including the Abaddon, behind him to save his life. King's mid though. OG want to go high ground. They see Arteezy spend top, and this is where they're like, well, if they're going to be top, we got to force them back. Keep EG honest. Make sure they don't play out on the map. You want to make force them to defend. And EG may just have to give up this Rax. With his user, it looks like they want to try and defend this one. S4. He gets stunned up. He's going to lose his entire mana pool in the borrowed time force out as well. So now there's a 50 second window with it on cooldown, and Anna. Manta doesn't actually dodge the stun, it finds him afterwards, but he's more than okay with this Butterfly Aegis. He's just going to take out this melee Rax uncontested, essentially. Sven is dealing no damage to him. The no. missed chance from Butterfly, and uh, now he's sitting at 50 armor, 49. And they're just going to swing bottom. They say, let's just do that again, right? If they don't, if they can't defend mid, what's to say they can defend bottom? But if you're EG, you do not want to go down a second melee Rax. That's where this game gets very difficult to play. A Baron needs to be close, but maybe needs to stand a bit further behind because they're just popping his borrowed time every single time the fight starts. Plus one they're second going all duration, in. yeah. Bloodthorn on Sven. Wants to be able to deal with this Jug. Jug just hit level 25 though, so an extra second of Omni Slash. Usually you often see that extra health, but I think he just feels tanky enough as it is and wants that ability to just Omni Slash the Sven. Oh, gets going with the Bloodthorn, but there's an Insta Manta. Mana pops the blade through, he's going to force RTZ back on the back lines. It was actually the Ember Spur to initiate in. He's forced to defensively Remnant out of there. He's low in mana though, Sumail's going to be careful. He's bottling back up to try and take this fight. Mana with the Lotus Orb bounces the stun back from the Sven. Aegis lasting for 30 more seconds here. Mana, Nightmare is on him, and he wants to take it off. Doesn't look like it. Seb just throws out an Empower. Sven popping the God Strength here. Is he going to go in? Use the Bloodthorn on him. Yeah, he's going to look to take out Anna's first life. Is he even got the damage for it? There we go. They pop the Aegis. That Aegis was expiring in 15 seconds anyways. Can they take this fight? Now Anna immediately Blade Fury is on the back lines. They've lost crit though. That's the big kill. They were looking maybe for a Dark Willow Terrorize onto Anna. Instead, he's going to be forced to buy back. Anna with the low Orb still in the front lines here. Arteezy can't really throw out that stun unless he's willing to commit a BKB. Does Anna go for this melee Rax or do OG play it safe? He's bringing something on Jug. All right, they're he's giving got him the cheese. cheese. Yeah. yeah, he's making. You've space. got to burst this him This Lotus Orb is doing God's work because Sven can't really throw. He's out stun. of mana. Sven, he's down to 150 mana. He can't actually take this fight, even if they don't kill him. Ortiz is forced back to the fountain, so I think OG may try and take this Rax. The problem is no one can really wake him up. If Magnus wakes him up, he probably dies for it. So you let Anna take the Rax here. He's got Blade Fury if you want to use it now, but 
Seb hiding in the trees. He gets the RP on the back line. This Cure in forward. They're going to throw it on Omnislash. Artizi does get the BKB off, but he's dying That's in a this Omnislash. Artizi's been bashed up as well. It's a dieback. He's beyond godlike. And it absolutely destroys them on the back line. Sumail, he's trying to do what he can. He's gone in one versus three. He's lost his Willow. That's a dieback from Crit as well. And Sumail is in all sorts of trouble. EG running out of lives. They're just all dead. They're so bound up. Two of them click together. The Skewer are going to push them as well. And it looks like EG. They're down to their last lives here. They buy back on the Ember Spirit. S4 gets taken out as well. He's got no buyback. Jerix is invis in the back line with the Shadow Blade. He stuns up Sumail once, gets the second stun as well. That's an instant dieback from him. And I think this is GG. EG have been 2 0 by their nemesis. OG take them out once again. It's a bit of deja vu from the last time these two teams met at TI. OG's understanding.